Okay, so I'm going to approach the arms pretty much the same way you would approach the legs. I may not um, may not go with like this position that they're in in my orthographics. I may go with something a little bit different, but um, for the most part, I'm just going to grab this outer edge and extrude it. One thing different is that I'm now using Maya 2016, so the interface is a little different, but for the most part, all the tools are still the same. Um, I'm just going to be using, you know, mostly the multi-cut tool and the extrude tool, uh, maybe like the, the fill hole or, or some, you know, bridge, some other tools here and there. But um, for the most part, it's pretty straightforward um, for the arms. Uh, I'm just going to grab that and extrude out. I don't think I actually hit the extrude button, did I? Yeah, I did. Um, and so to to start basically just something like that and make sure it's got a good position from both front um, and side views side angles you know like a natural position <clears throat> and from here I can kind of tweak some things like the shoulders move things around before I really start sort of trying to um, work on the form um, one thing that I'm as you can tell is that from my uh, orthographic views that I draw drew uh, my character is definitely kind of thicker in in all areas you know except for maybe his his legs um, I'm not too concerned about his legs because he's gonna have pants on um, but his arms are definitely gonna be thicker and you know sometimes you you know except for his head his head is actually smaller than the orthographic but you know, sometimes you have to stray from those. It's important not to like hold yourself to your orthographics too much. Um, you know, basically, if it looks good, it is good. So if it if you're following the orthographics and it's just not looking how you want it to look, then um, then you know it's time to change. It's time to to kind of um, do something different. I guess is what I'm trying to say. <clears throat> so once you have sort of that form for the hands laid out, you can probably pull them forward a little bit. Um, then you can go in and I'm just going to use my multi-cut tool here um, and hold down control and add in some subdivisions. Um, the first thing I want to kind of deal with is the bicep. So I'm going to add in a couple for the bicep and then just maybe a couple more and the bicep itself can be kind of an edge loop going around um, and he's not a very muscular character so it's not going to be huge um, and you can probably get away with with building out some of this muscle form just by kind of using the sort of grid type polygons that you have um, but things like the elbow might need a little bit more touch. Um, so yeah, another tool that I like using now that I have Maya 2016 is the sculpting tools. So these are, are very useful and I, I believe, you know, one day they will be, um, as good as like the sculpting tools in Mudbox and, you know, the Maya viewport will be able to handle you know, millions of polygons and you can just sculpt right here and that will be awesome. No more like 
going back and forth between Mudbox and Maya. Uh, but one really useful tool here is the grab tool. So I like to have, whenever I'm using this grab tool, I like to have, I like to be able to see my wireframe. So if you double click that um, and go down to display, you can have show wireframe on. So then you can actually see your wireframe while you're using your grab tool. Um, and if you hold down B and click and drag, it will change your brush size and M will change your magnitude. So, um, So I like using the grab tool to be able to just sort of grab polygons around, move them around. You can kind of shape things out a little bit. And um, as we move forward, I think I'm going to be using this quite a bit to get the, um, the forms, the shapes that I want. And um, I don't like using it in a way where you're just clicking and dragging and moving around. I kind of like to use it in little in little taps, you know, where you can kind of just kind of slightly move things around a little bit. You know, look at, again, look at everything from all angles. You want it to look good from all angles. You probably even touch some of his legs here and, and kind of edit them a little bit. His backside kind of definitely needs some work. So I probably whenever I'm done with the arms and hands, I'm going to go through and like just touch on, on everything and kind of get the body looking really good. Uh, get, make sure I have all my geometry right before I move on to doing the clothing. Um, but yeah, that grab tool is super useful, and if you hold down shift, it will switch over to the smooth tool, so you can kind of smooth things out that way if you hold down shift. Um, yeah, that's definitely a good way to to go about um, kind of shaping things out with the, the arms and even, you know, other parts of the body as well. Um, if you want to define an area, so if I want to kind of come in and define um, the biceps, so the biceps always like this sort of round shape. So what I would do is just kind of come in and make my own little edge loop. And come in right there where the And that makes these ingons, but those are pretty easy to fix. I could either, you know, make another edge loop. I could try, um, that might actually be a better idea is doing something like that than just joining those up. Um, and then I can kind of come in here and do something like that. to get rid of all those to make you know all quads so anytime you have a a five-sided polygon near a three-sided polygon it's easy to make quads out of everything uh, and then I can switch back to that grab tool and make sure I'm in in object mode and I might actually put that grab tool on my my polygons shelf just so it's easy to get to but um, then I can just hold down shift and kind of start smoothing everything out and then I have some extra extra polygons here to work with and get that that bicep kind of looking like a bicep
So this doesn't completely replace just clicking vertices and moving them around, but um, I like it. I like to use this. I think it's a good good way to shape things out. And as far as modeling goes, I think this way of modeling with um, sculpting tools is kind of the wave of the future. Um, you know, your topology is still very important. But I think um, I think modeling with these sort of grab tools and sculpting tools is, is where it's at or where it's going to be uh, in the not too near future. You know, you have things like ZBrush. Um, in the case of ZBrush, a lot of pipelines are using, you know, only ZBrush for uh, a lot of it, you know, basically retopologizing using ZBrush all the way up until the the animation portion of of the pipeline, in which case they will bring it into Maya or Motion Builder or something like that and animate. <clears throat> so check see what that looks like smooth mode um, have some little bit of form in the bicep could pro probably be smoothed out a little bit but again this isn't a super muscular character so So he's not going to have super muscular arms. <clears throat> I may want to add in more geometry um, to define. And I have a good opportunity to. I have basically a triangle here, a triangle here. So, And same thing over here, which will help me with defining the elbow. The elbow is going to need a lot of geometry so whenever it bends it will have enough geometry to, to deform and stretch so I can go in and just add in an edge loop there and add in an edge loop there and that will give me probably one right there too And um, the hand itself is going to need quite a bit of geometry, so I don't mind adding, you know, back here you have some stuff that's kind of stretched out. So I don't mind adding some geometry here. I just don't want it going all the way down to the legs, like where it, you know, it's kind of headed. So for now, to kind of stop that where it's at, and then I can kind of rearrange what's going on here, I can just delete an edge and make an ingon there. And then add in some geometry. And then I can kind of reevaluate this situation and um, try to figure out a better way to have that geometry kind of going where I want it to go. Instead of. where I don't want it to go. So just with anything, sometimes you got to kind of mess things up a little bit to kind of get it where you want it to be. I, and I might may come back to this later, um, you know, whenever I'm touching everything up. I think that may be what I do. So for now, I may just kind of leave it where it's at. Um, well, let's see. I have I have a triangle there, and I have a triangle here. So I could probably for now just kind of do something like that to get rid of those, and then again come back to your sculpting tool. Um, 
and use that grab. Make sure again, you gotta make sure you're in object mode to use that. And just kind of smooth things out a little bit and that'll kind of let you see what's actually going on back there. I have an end gone there that I can fix a little bit later. Uh, for now, I'll just make that a triangle. Um, <clears throat> and you know, for the elbow, I can kind of approach that the same way I did the bicep. I'm just going to go in and make my own little uh, edge loop in here. For now, I'll try that. But that's basically um, for the time being. All I'm really going to do for the for the arms, um, I will do a time lapse where I'm kind of touching on everything and refining the arms. Um, but you know, you won't need to listen to me talk while I do that. You know, you can just kind of sit back and watch me kind of go over everything um, to get it to look right. So sort of like a final phase before I go in and um, work on the clothing. You know, I want to get uh, the, the arm looking basically as great as I can before um, before I move on to the clothing, but I think it's important at this point to kind of um, just move on to the hand because the hand is going to create a lot of geometry that may need to connect up in here somehow. So just like the feet, um, I'm probably going to do the hands in a separate Maya file so I don't have to worry about connecting everything up. I can just kind of concentrate on the look of the hand to begin with. Uh, and then I will, and then I'll bring it into this file. I'll connect everything together, and then I'm just going to go through like a quick pass over everything, and make sure I get this guy looking, you know, proportions all right and everything. Get him looking really good before I move on to making his clothing. Um, but you know, depending on your character, if your character has a lot more muscle definition. Uh, you basically just want to come in and kind of route your geometry how that muscle definition is going to flow. Um, in my case, he's not very defined, but I still have, you know, like around his rib cage and stuff, I have that kind of in the direction I want it to. If I wanted to define the the rib the rib muscles or the muscle fiber that kind of goes in this direction, I would just come in and reroute my geometry so it's kind of all going in that direction. But for now, I think what I have is good enough to just sort of move on to the um, to the hands. Um, you will have like this weird banding, and that's just from your normals. So while I'm modeling, I kind of like to just go to, um, you know, all my normals are set to face. That's in a different uh, area now that we're in Maya 2016. Now that's going to be under mesh display. So we can just come in and say set the face. I think I may need to um, unlock them first. Or harden all. There we go. So yeah, and now um, that's the, the arms for now. And... Um, and next, I will go over modeling the heads. Most important hotkey in the world, Control-S for save. <laughs> 